Good morning. This is Pastor Don Erickson at Rock of Ages Lutheran Church in Wildwood, Florida. We're continuing our uh, daily scripture readings as a way of centering ourselves in God's Word. Today I want to bring to you a message from Matthew in the fifth chapter. It's a familiar message and it's a, an antithetical message. I'll explain that in a minute. Matthew 5, verses 1 through 12 in the New Revised Standard Version. Now, when he saw the crowds, he went up on a mountainside and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. As I said, this is a contradiction to our experience in modern life today. Jesus is saying, Blessed are those who are suffering, essentially. Who are those who are suffering today? If you watched our worship service yesterday, you heard a message from Bishop Elizabeth Eaton, the presiding bishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. Uh, it happened to have been Trinity Sunday, when we observe and try to understand as best we humanly can, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And a large portion of Bishop Eaton's message dealt with the reality of racism. I know racism is not something we like to talk about. It's an ugly word. We don't talk about it much in the church, at least in my experience. But the one thing that we do talk about a lot is justice because justice is what Jesus was all about. Justice for the poor, justice for everyone that was mentioned in these Beatitudes. So as we confront the uncomfortable topic of racism in the church, we can't shy away from it because it is very close to what it is we hold dear in God's promises of justice for all. Justice for all doesn't mean only a privileged segment of our culture, of our society. What we have witnessed as a result of cell phone videos in recent days is disgusting. And I can't imagine that any of you feel any differently about it. We are seeing a global response to this horrific murder. The church cannot remain separated from this topic. The church must be active in proclaiming the good news of Jesus Christ and his call for justice for all. His call to make the Beatitudes a reality for those who are oppressed in today's world. Oppression is a reality that we as Caucasians, as white people, most likely have not experienced much of. We have no idea what it is to walk in the shoes of a person of color. Well, we say that we're not racist, and perhaps we're, we're not in the technical sense. But what are we doing to ensure justice for all people? As Bishop Eaton talked about the Trinity, and she talked about the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, she reminded us that the Father created each and every one of us in his image. And when we talk about the Son, we talk about love. We talk about the extension 
of God's kingdom through uh, an earthly form, a man, Jesus, who brought love as the antidote to all human sin. And we talk about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not one that chooses who to go to and, and who to motivate and, and who to call to righteousness. So when we talk about the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, it's an all-encompassing understanding that we have about we as human beings. And if we have that understanding of our faith, then we must have that same understanding about all people, people of color, no matter what color, people of every belief, no matter what belief. For after all, as I said, we are created in the image of God. Not some folks, but not others. All are created in the image of God. And so I don't have the answers to racism. I don't have the answers to all of the horrific goings on in the world today, the demonstrations and the calls for change. I, I don't have the answers to any of that. But I do know that we as the church are called to work for justice, to pray for justice, mercy, and love for all. Let's say a quick prayer. Almighty God, we live in a troubled world. We are sinful beings, and it has come out in terrific ways in recent days. Father, forgive us for the sins of our separatism, for the sins of racism. Help us, Almighty God, to place love before all other thoughts, all other motivations. And if we love completely, then racism goes away. So help us, Almighty God, to be a force for justice, for mercy, for love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we come closer now to opening our churches, and we're beginning to uh, lay clear plans about what that might mean for us. So Lord, guide us in our uncertainty assure us that when we do gather in whatever form that we are doing so safely we are anxious lord to regather to meet one another to worship one another to pray with one another lord in your mercy hear our prayer our continuing prayer lord is that this covid 19 would soon go away Help it to diminish to the point where we can return to our lives. Father, it's a global impact. And as we see some places it's subsiding, we see others where it is um, increasing. So Lord, help us, guide us through all of these uh, bits of data so that we make the correct decisions. And be with those, Lord, who are afflicted. Be with those who have lost loved ones to it. 104,000 plus in our country alone. Father, be with those who are in the medical community, first responders, protect them, Lord, equip them, bless them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Again, Lord, we give you thanks for your mighty, holy, and transcendent word of truth. Thank you, Lord, that we can come to you and read your scripture help you, uh, us to internalize it, to make it part of our hearts. And Lord, thank you for being available to us in prayer. And all of God's people said, amen. I hope that this is a, a blessed day for you and that your week will be blessed. I hope that you're well. And above all, I hope that you feel blessed. Until we meet again tomorrow, this is Pastor Don. God bless.